Hey everybody, Josh here. As you've probably noticed from my Facebook and Instagram, I've been doing a lot of traveling the past couple of months. Uh, I've just come back from Cambodia. It was a great time, amazing experience, left some wonderful impressions on me. Uh, some people have wrote me messages, direct messages, comments, stuff like, thanks for sharing, that's great. I hope I can do that in the future. Uh, that's impossible for me to do, so I really appreciate you sharing these videos and photos. And um, I wish that I could do that. You know, it's uh, people just limit themselves by saying those things when in reality it probably is possible to have that experience. So what I did was did a bit of research to see how you can make that impossible possible by, uh, you know, I developed a traveling budget for this exact experience to Cambodia. The uh, most expensive thing will be the plane ticket. But outside of that, it's dirt cheap. To travel there and I'd say majority of you who say that you wish you could you hope you can I'm sure that you can and today I want to uh, share that with you all right so here we are we're gonna go over daily expenses accommodation prices and all that good stuff right now I usually use booking.com and Airbnb when I travel However, something to do is when you find that hotel on booking.com, for example, it's always good to go to the hotel's website itself due to the fact that it might be cheaper directly through the hotel because a third party service quite often charges some type of commission fee that might come out of your pocket, maybe comes out of the hotel pocket, but better off to check and save yourself a few more dollars, right? When we went there, we stayed in a really nice hotel. It's like $45, $50 a night, five star. And it included a very delicious breakfast every day. Um, and um, I think anywhere in Southeast Asia, if you're looking at Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, you can find really nice accommodations for extremely affordable prices. Now, daily expenses when it comes to food. If you're in the city walking around Siem Reap and there's plenty of street food stands. Any street food stand you go to, you want a lunch, it's a dollar. You want a water, it's a dollar. You want a beer, it's a dollar. Pretty much everything from street vendors costs a dollar a piece there. Um, I mean, Angkor beer, Angkor beer, Cambodia beer, all the locally brewed stuff, one dollar. If you're looking at drinking some handcraft stuff or some imported products, you're gonna pay more money, of course. Also, if you decide to eat three times a day in a restaurant or cafe, you'll expect those expenses to blow up, right? I mean, you're looking at a dollar for a drink and a dollar for a dish from a street food stand in a cafe or a restaurant, you're going to pay at least five to six dollars. <throat> now admission to get into a place such as Angkor Wat, it costs about $35 a day. For a three day pass though, it is only $62. In my opinion, uh, one day is not enough to experience everything that Angkor Wat has to offer. Uh, three days felt pretty good with that. We weren't rushed, we were able to take everything in, see all the sites we wanted to see, and that ran us $62 per ticket. Also, in Angkor Wat, it's a 200 square mile territory of like ancient ruins and temples. So you, can you really walk all of that? No you need uh, some kind of transport, whether it be a bicycle, a motorcycle, or a tuk-tuk. Now, if you wanted to rent a bicycle per day, you could rent a bike from the old market in CM Reap for $2 at the most. You could probably uh, haggle them down to a dollar if you got good bartering skills. If you wanted to go by motorbike, you'll pay about $8 per day. And uh, we took a tuk-tuk, and that costs anywhere between $20 to $25 per day. So on a three-day pass, that's another $75 you will end up paying. But it was great because the driver himself, he's some kind of guide. He's a local person, uh, speaks English, 
and it's uh, it's good to be able to get acquainted with a local and understand uh, their mentality, their perspective, their opinions of the places, and they uh, give you free bottles of water too. So we didn't have to pay for all the extra water there. It came straight from him, and you need to drink a lot of water while you're there because it's extremely hot. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at airfare prices and uh, summarize our expenses for a trip to Southeast Asia. Now the most expensive item on your list is going to be your airfare cost by far. Um, I would estimate anywhere between $450 to $600 for a flight from let's say Chicago to Southeast Asia. Uh, maybe a bit cheaper if you're in the West Coast. Now in order to uh, get the cheapest flight probably look at flying by low costers domestically or maybe even internationally. It's not as comfortable, not as much leg room, but you can save uh, quite a bit of money doing that, right? So research those options. Secondly, when do you plan to go? Uh, you should look at when is the high season, when's peak season, when's low season. Some important things. And um, what day of the week you travel as well can have some kind of influence on how much the price of the ticket is. Uh, so play around with that. Use uh, maybe Momondo, Skyscanner, search the internet, and uh, yeah, just do some research, simple as that. So to wrap things up, let's say, we'll say $500 for your airfare. Uh, five nights in a hostel, in CM Reap is gonna run you $50. Uh, let's say $100 if you want more privacy. More money for a better hotel, right? And uh, food for five or six days there, it's gonna run you anywhere from $50 to $80. Motorbike transportation for three days in the Angor Wat Complex will run you about $30. So, we're looking at roughly $750 to $800 for a five or six day experience in Cambodia. Now, of course, if you want a more comfortable experience, a nicer hotel, eating in cafes and restaurants, uh, we should probably tack on extra maybe $200, so we could say a thousand, thousand dollars. We could probably do it for less. Uh, now, you don't have the money for this, right? So what do you do? Uh, you gotta save. Uh, how can we save some money for this experience? First of all, you can probably start eating in more. Not eating out at restaurants and cafes three or four times a week. Cooking for yourself really does save a lot of money. Uh, secondly, taking a few nights off of the bars and, and clubs on the weekends, you can easily save $150 uh, a month by doing that. Look at a long-term plan, uh, save up some money for you know seven months, eight months, and uh, make this I can't, I wish I could, make it reality for yourself. If you have any questions, I uh, just want to talk about traveling or anything with me, feel free to hit me up on my Instagram, my Facebook, uh, or by email, and I'll be happy to discuss things further with you. Take it easy.